Um, hello, everyone. As we summarize the lichenoid dermatosis, uh, today we shall cover uh, the, the, a few of the last segments in this section. So today we shall look at a similar discrimic compastance and maybe one or two more disorders in this uh, uh, particular disease category. So erythema um, um, uh, discrimicum pastans is also called the ashy dermatosis. It was first described as dermatitis uh, sinesiata by uh, uh, Ramirez in the 1957. And this ashy dermatosis is because of the characteristic grayish skin discoloration that comes with this particular condition. So some people consider it as a variant of lichen planus, you know, lichen planus pigmentosus, but other people think it is its own entity and it is not, it has nothing to do with lichen planus. So the key features in this particular condition is that it has this slow progressive uh, gray or bluish uh, discoloration that uh, usually ends up giving the browns or either ovoid or uh, annular or round macules and patches uh, that usually starts in the heterogeneous areas, the axilla, the neck, but can cover the entire trunk or even the face. And um, you, we get a peripheral rim of erythema uh, around the edges. Remember, when you're looking at Petrasis rotunda, we say that the edges are not inflamed. That now, in this case, for um, ashy dermatosis, the edges are a little bit inflamed. This condition is more common in the Latinos, in the Latin Americans, who have a skin type uh, that is three, four, and and um, uh, up to six. But then. Um, Histology primarily will show you dermo melanophages. So that, that's what we see on histology. So Ramirez described it as dermatitis sinicienta, uh, and then it was termed erythema discromicum pastans by Salzburg. And uh, um, after describing a lot of cases, about 150 uh, cases of uh, this condition. So primarily it will affect dark skinned individuals with skin types, uh, maybe three and, uh, and, and, um, uh, and four, uh, but more, more so it can also extend to Fitzpatrick skin type up to six. So more frequently seen in the, uh, in the Latinas and there's uh, no gender preference, the reports suggest that more women affected than men. But when you look at the level of significance, it is less than 0.5. So meaning that majorly there's no gender, uh, gender bias. So oftentimes the sites that are involved first uh, are the heterogeneous areas, the natural and can spread to involve the rest of the body. And it occurs between the first and the third decade of life. So that is between 10 years to around um, uh, 30 years. The exact pathogenesis is still not known, but it has been associated with environmental factors, pollutant, certain drugs. Uh, however, the associations are, have all, all not been proven. We, we also have sporadic associations where it is uh, thought to be uh, due to maybe ammonium nitrate, penicillin, pesticides, or HIV cell conversion, or when you use the radio uh, graphic contrast media, uh, when you're doing maybe the CT scans and uh, contrasted, the contrasted CT scans and angiograms. So you end up getting this condition after the patient has received that type of treatment. So some cases have actually been misdiagnosed as lichenoid drug eruptions, like fixed drug eruptions and the rest, because of the similarity in the appearance of the skin with these other disease conditions. So in the clinical picture, we shall see slow progressive gray brown or gray uh, blue macules and patches. Uh, lesions typically are ovoid in shape and may also follow uh, skin uh, cleavage lines, commonly affecting the neck, the trunk, proximal arms, uh, but it spares the palms and soles and the scalp, as well as the mucous membranes, as opposed to fixed drug eruption that can also involve the mucous membranes. In, in ashy dermatosis, you will not have uh, mucous membrane involvement, and it will spare the palms and the soles, as well as the scalp. So lesions can persist for years with some cases clearing spontaneously within maybe two to three years. That is 70% of the cases, but the rest, it can persist for life. And then someone will be with this disorder for the rest of their life. So when you take off a sample, you will see lesions that uh, 
uh, the lesional skin will show uh, vascularization and then uh, um, a mild like you know, it lymphocytic infiltrate along the basal membrane. And uh, in other lesions, you can see pigment incontinence where you have uh, melanin dropping to the dermis. Then you have melanophages there that take it up. So you have uh, fissures of um, uh, uh, melanin incontinence. When you do direct immunofluorescence, you'll see um, presence with IgM, IgG, uh, fibrinogen, and C3 uh, staining, which will be similar to what you see still in lichen planus. But fine, this is similar to what you see in lichen planus, but this is a very distinctive uh, disorder. So as you can see here in this histology slide, you will see that we have this melanin incontinence within the dermis here, and then you see this vacuola interface dermatitis. You see the, the, these big cells with the cytoplasm and the clear cytoplasm, whitish cytoplasm, and the nucleus are forming vacuoles. So that's what we call vacuola interface dermatitis, and with this uh, pigment incontinence into the dermis. So that's what you see on histology. So furthermore, you have to distinguish it from lichen planus, vitreous rosea, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, fixed drug eruption, small plaque plus psoriasis, because they have a similar presentation. They may look the same, but this is different. And you have to distinguish it from lichenoid drug eruptions, especially um, a fixed drug eruption, which can give you post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and a similar histological uh, picture. So treatment, most of the treatments in this case are very, very ineffective. So your treatment may serve no purpose, but the proposed therapies include a sun protection because we know the sun exposure can tend to worsen uh, hyperpigmented or pigmentary disorders of the skin. So we can also do topical corticosteroids, retinoids, vitamin C, and then chemical pills, as well as oral antibiotics to try and salvage the situation. Uh, Profazamine have been shown to be successful in a few case studies in anecdotal uh, data, but uh, these are not yet uh, confirmed. But since uh, they have been shown to be effective in some literature, you can try it out since you don't have a lot of options when it comes to uh, treatment. So why shouldn't you forget about uh, ashidamatosis? One, the first one it is chronic persistent condition. It primarily affects skin types three and uh, uh, three and four, but it can also be seen in uh, five and six. Then usually asymptomatic, but es essentially very troublesome when it comes to the disc pigment, the C pigment uh, uh, that it comes with the the color change. It can end up uh, being associated with other things like anxiety, depression, and the rest. So okay. limited treatment options, but some cases undergo spontaneous resolution. So the other conditions that we wanted to look at is what we call keratosis like amyloid you know, uh, chronica, first described by Kaposi in the 1895. Uh, he named us it as like in uh, rubra acuminatus vericosus 8 uh, reticularis because it has a reticular pattern and um, sometimes it can be rough on the surface, so it is ver verucous, and, uh, but most of the regions are a little bit uh, lichenoid and uh, uh, rubra meaning red. So the key features, you'll see this voracious keratotic or lichenoid papules that usually form a linear or reticulate pattern on the skin, and uh, the, it has a symmetrical distribution affecting the limbs, especially here and here if you can see, and uh, it can also have a seborrheic dermatitis like greasy scales, especially if it affects the scalp. So the scale lesions can also erupt on the upper face, sometimes can tend to involve the, the palms and toes and nails and the scalp as well. So it has a chronic cause with, uh, with it being progressive over time, it can, continues to spread and uh, the lesions may regress uh, in summer or with age, and then it can leave you with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So as you can see in this picture that I put on the side here, you will see this linear uh, verucous uh, lichenoid uh, plaques that, uh, that uh, are having this reticulate pattern. You know reticulate means like net-like net pattern. So that's how it will look like. So um, on histology, this, it will be similar to lichen planus, 
but uh, there will be no significant immunologic uh, differences with the with the lichen planus. So that's why some people think that maybe it is also a variant of lichen planus. So treatment is usually unsatisfactory. A tried therapies include tropical corticosteroid, methotrexate, cyclosporin, uh, oral vitamin A, uh, phototherapy. But uh, sometimes there's no improvement and there's no actuary relief, and you just need to maybe to give like a keratolytic drug to try and come down. The, the the uh, smoothing out the skin, then you can give immune moderatory drugs to try and limit the inflammatory reaction, and that this is how it will look like, as you can see in this uh, in these pictures. So you see this reticular pattern, net like pattern on the skin. So then you will see also this verrucous uh, picture. You see this. Then you have lichenoid papules. Then the plaques can be verrucous. So that's why one uh, scientist thought it is. Uh, a verrucous uh, condition. That's why he was calling it the lichen rubra acuminatus verrucous 8 reticularis. But now we just call it keratosis lichenoidis uh, chronica. Then the other condition I want to talk about as we summarize, this is the recently described in 2003. We call it the annular lichenoid dermatitis of the youth. So in this case, it was first described in 2003 by Anansi and their friends. So it has a, a characteristic feature where you have annular lesions, which uh, sometimes overlap with morphia, or even mycosis fungoides, or even vitiligo, or any other erythemas. And primarily, it affects children and young adults, so with a peak of about 5 to 22 years, but also reported in adult males in about okay. uh, regions age 35 to uh, 33 to, 30 to 45 years of age. And the lesions will be erythematous, macules that enlarge into reddish brown patches with a central hypopigmentation. So this can vary in size from about 5 to 15 centimeters in diameter and the common location includes the green and the flanks and they can be either solitary or multiple lesions where the individual can have up to 12 lesions. So the pictures I got for these conditions are not very clear because even in literature, it doesn't have a lot of literature. It was it has just been described as a new entity. Uh, but in these pictures, you can see here we are seeing these uh, atrophic uh, annular plaques. Even here, if you can see clearly here, in this area where I'm pointing, and it can either come after either vitiligo, either mycosis fungoides, or even morphia. As it resolve, as those conditions resolve, then they give you that that, that like you know, annular dermatitis of the youth. So on histology, it has its distinctive distinctive histology where you get band-like lymphocytic infiltrate with vascular changes in the basal layer. And uh, you'll see apoptotic tinocytes at the red ridges uh, tips. You know, you have red ridges down there. For example, if that is your, if, the, if that is your um, epidermis, we know we call these ones red ridges. So at the base here of the red ridges, you find that in this particular condition, you end up seeing a few uh, necrotic tinocytes in these particular areas. That is the feature that you usually see. So mainly you'll see CD4 and CD8 cells, but there will be no spongiosis. The queen cocos and treatment, usually it, it goes away or by itself, or sometimes it can persist, but we treat with the steroids, and sometimes we can also do phototherapy. So this is how it will look like, and this is the picture I picked from Damnet, and um because I've never made a diagnosis of this particular condition. So usually they say that at the at the base of the red, like here at the tip of the red ridges, you'll see that keratinus, as you can see that reddish one, even here, even there, and then also this other side. So this is the histology that you shall see with this dense lymphocytic infiltrate. So I'd like to thank you very much for your patience and hope you enjoyed the video. So you can comment in the comment section. You tell us what you want to learn about in dermatology for skin, uh, for people with a skin of uh, of color so that we can prepare something for you uh, to suit your needs. Thank you. God bless you. See you in the next segment.